Okay, let's go. Francesco and IP Tours U Travels Challenge all around payment and uh, Andriana has also gone a bit into the problem set and telling us more about what they've done in Team Blockshackle. Yes, hello. I'm part of Team Blockshackle and we took part in the IP Tour Challenge and I'll firstly make sure that you have an idea on our understanding on the challenge. So we figured out that the main aspect on the challenge is the difficulty in payment of the local guide. So we have a customer, someone that has, wants to participate in a tour, and we have the local guide that does the tour, and somehow the local guide has to get paid. Currently, this is done, for example, by cash. But what exactly are the problems with that? So there are multiple challenges, uh, including that. We have firstly that um, such tours are all over the world, so it's not in a specific region, it's like on continents, cities, and so on. So we have the, um, may have the limitation in banking services, so maybe there's no ATM working in the region and you can't get cash. Also, there's the currency issue, so if you have different continents, different cities, different countries, you may have different currencies that you have to handle as a customer. And also, from the point of view of the tour operator that was responsible for the booking of the tour and who has the local guide, um, is connected to the local guide, we have to validate which customer that was registered for the tour also attended the tour. And also the local guide that does the tour on only has to get paid for the participants that really appeared during the tour. So these are the challenges. We found some solutions for that. We firstly do that the local guide that gets the payment has a digital wallet and he can choose what his preferred currency is that he wants to get paid in. And also the, we automate the process of the uh, payment um, based on the presence of the customers. And for that, so for the registration on how many customers visited each checkpoint on the tour, we decided to use QR codes. Um, in the challenge, there was GPS mentioned, but we thought that GPS has too many limitations. For example, the um, accuracy, maybe in bad weather conditions, and also there's privacy issues with the data of the customer. So that's why we decided against this. And to give an idea on the user story, so the experience for the user, um, we have a little video prepared. So this is our customer that wants to book a tour. And she does this with Alphatour World. She does the booking a week earlier and a few weeks later, she then finally does the tour. So there are multiple participants, there's a tour guide, and what we thought about is a, an initial check-in in the tour. There are several checkpoints with several destinations on the tour, and each checkpoint has QR codes. And the last QR code is the final checkpoint where we can get a little reward for the customer. So what our main experience or main thought was, we want to make this as appealing for the customer as possible. So we don't want it to feel like a chore to scan all those QR codes. So how can we do the user experience as best as possible? And our idea was that with each QR code scan, the customer gets a little image of the checkpoint the customer visited. So this may be a little photo of the site the person saw, and so on. And finally, when all the checkpoints were gathered, the customer gets them a reward in the form of a coupon or free drinks, for example. And um, that's also a good option for um, like business cases, because the last checkpoint can be placed strategically. So if we may have the last QR code at a restaurant and we can then get a restaurant discount, this could be really matching. So how does the customer even scan the QR code? How does the customer get information on the booking the customer did? So this is our idea. We did so two prototypes. 
it's really one app, but with different views. So there's one customer view and one local guide view. Um, they are a little different because the guide has direct access to his wallet with the app and the customer not directly. But I'll show it to you now. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible for the customer to scan the QR code. So with one click on the home screen, you are able to open the QR code mode to scan the QR codes. Then you can also see the rewards you get from scanning all the checkpoints. And you can also see the little images that you collected um, during the tour. And you can also like show it in a greater size so that you remember what have I visited. I can show it to my friends and family and yes. What we also included is we didn't want to force the wallet to the customer. So we wanted to um, have them, they should choose how to pay. They shouldn't be forced to use the wallet explicitly. And that's the guide app. The guide also has a QR code for the initial check-in that is done in the tour. And also a view on how many participants are there, how many have checked in with the blue icons and also the uh, direct access to the connected wallet and the transactions. Also the preferred currency as this was the problem. And yes. So now we'll get into a little more technical parts as this was really about the user experience and what we thought about with the design. And I'll then give the microphone to my colleague. Hello everybody. So I will talk about the system architecture. So as my colleague explained before, we have two apps. Which one is tour guide app and another is customer app. And Alfie tour is, plays, the, plays the main role here. So the Alfie tour infrastructure which will initiate the contract. This contract has to have some data. First of all, we will send all of the wallet addresses of the users plus the wallet address of tour guide. And also we have, we should block some funds on the Spark contract. <clears throat> the fund is proportional to the amount of the, the number of the customers which will participate in the day of uh, the tour. The token that tour guide has decided to use, here we are using ERC20, so we'll uh, accept all of the tokens that are compatible with that standard. And this amount would be blocked on the contract with blockchain that the name of the smart contract that we have designed is excursion contract. In the blockchain, uh, we start this contract, we block some money. The users can start the journey if there is enough amount of money blocked on the a smart contract. The next step would be the start of the journey. As my colleague explained, they will scan every QR code and <clears throat> the tour guide will see the information live for every QR code and he sees how it's going. And we will receive information from a smart contract. After each uh, QR, after scanning each QR, each QR code, we have another contract which uh, will create NFTs and directly comes to the wallet of the customers. And, and customers at the last checkpoint will check out. The excursion contract comes to the play and will calculate the number of real customers that have been in that day. Uh, plus the token that user guide has decided to receive the money. And then a smart contract un unblocks the amount and will be paid to the wallet of the user guide, a local guide. Here is a little bit of the data structure that we have designed for the excursion contract. So we are not limited to one tour operator. We design an address for tour operator so every tour operator can leverage of this contract. We will uh, use different address of for tour guides. The token address is the address that tour guide prepared to get paid before. We have uh, some other details like uh, 
uh, valid addresses of the customer, checkpoints. We have unit price, which is the price of the tour of that day, uh, <clears throat> and other details. This is the testnet OpenC that uh, the, an example that we created NFT for a user that used that tool. So you will see in the wallet you, they can see their NFTs as they scan all of the the QR codes because it's like an incentive for them to check for every point. For the future ideas, we were thinking about implementation of the front end real app with the possibility of searching for booking, personalizing the places, and also write the reviews. We can may use uh, other ideas for the reviews as we have here. Uh, <clears throat> there is a possibility in the future that somehow is, is implemented our, <clears throat> our contract to directly pay from customer to the local guy. So the tour leader would be like a marketplace because there are a lot of problems that are not uh, directly from the tour operators, but are from local, uh, are from the places. But all complaints directly comes to the tours. In this way, uh, tours are like a marketplace and customers are direct, directly paying the local guides by using it for smart contracts. Uh, I will explain about <clears throat> Uh, problem you may and thank you so much well done team block shackle thanks a lot first question goes to Francesca so thank you very interesting I think you you correctly framed uh, the, the problem and I also captured a few small features that we didn't think about before so well done on that area but i mean we didn't see much on the technical development of this you talk about the smart contract and the app or whatever you didn't have the time to go through or or what i mean why did you stop at that level i mean um, I mean, the smart contract was uh, created. It, we have a working uh, oh. code, and it is in the GitHub repository available to be tested. We did. Uh, I mean, we did it through Remix, and the whole process was uh, is working. Is working. For oh, okay. Basis. Okay. We couldn't see from the presentation, but okay, the, the, the know. structure that the colleague uh, showed is the actual structure. Of okay. The okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying this. Um, yeah, I was actually glad that we didn't see any technology because uh, what was interesting is we use the interface and it's just a wonderful user experience. And I think that's one of the things about Web 3.0, you know, all the magic happens behind the, behind the scenes and the consumer or the user doesn't have to know about it. Uh, but that's not just an application that can be used for excursions, that can be used for anything, isn't it? And that's going to be part of the overall Alcatraz proposal in the future. It's going to be a function within functions. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. No more questions. Thank you, Blockchain.